mainly going to be about smartphone apps. How many of y'all have a smartphone? iPhone, Android, all those, yeah, pretty, pretty much a lot of folks. Um, you know about apps, I know that, and you probably know about some of the apps I'm going to talk about. This is going to have kind of a two part, two parts to it. The first part is, uh, is going to shock you maybe, and it might scare you a little bit <laughs> if you're not familiar with some of the apps and, and what they are capable of. I know you may have heard horror stories and see things in the news every now and then, and maybe you, th maybe you think smartphones are the devil and we just need to go back to uh, the old-fashioned the old ways. Um, but, but I want to talk about that just a little bit. I don't want to emphasize that. What I want to do at the end is give you, as, as fathers and uncles and brothers, and, and maybe you're here just, just for your own sake to help protect yourself, I want to give you uh, really the secret to, to it all, and it's not a secret. You're going to get to the end and you're going to kind of go, duh, that, I knew that all along. Uh, but like so many things with the Christian life, there's so many things that we know already. It's the doing, and it's the implementing in the day in our daily lives. Um, let me see if this will work. Yes. I got my first cell phone in 1995, and it looked like that. Anybody have one of those, the little Motorola flip phone thing? Uh, yeah, it was really cool. You could punch in pretty much the phone number, and then hit send, and that was, that was pretty much it. I don't remember what that battery life, the, the battery that came with it, uh, but I remember, remember you could get the bigger battery, which basically like tripled the width of the phone. It made it like a little brick you carried around. Uh, it had the little plastic antenna up there you'd, you'd pull out. That was my very first uh, cell phone. And you know, 15 years ago, if I said, hey, I want to take a picture of that, let me get my phone. Um, or, you know, I need to check my email, let me get my phone out. That would have made no sense whatsoever. You'd look at me like, okay, he's, he's lost it. Like Dick Tracy kind of stuff. But now... As you know, it's kind of like, oh, you know, I've got, I've got, here's my phone. I can do this and this and this and this and this. Oh, and I also make phone calls every now and then. You know, it's, it's kind of like that. Um, to, to say I need to get my phone to get online would make no sense. Uh, today, a normal smartphone, from what I understand, has enough power to, that, it, that it could have controlled mission control for one of the NASA space shots. Now, that may be an urban legend. I read it on the internet several places, so I'm pretty sure it's true. And I did check to see if it was an urban legend. I didn't find anybody debunking that. Uh, supposedly, all the, all the computers that they would use in mission control, basically, a typical smartphone has about that much, about that much power today. Now, um, and you know, many, how many of you are here because you have kids that have a smartphone? Or, and you're kind of wondering about what's going on with that. You know, why do we give, and answer back, why do we give phones, cell phones, to our kids? Why did you get your, your kid a cell phone? For emergencies? Know where they're at? Keep in touch? Yeah. They, Huh? Because <laughs> they cry, cry. They cry yeah. yeah. Because they have to have one. They just have, they can't live without one. Yeah, you know, we want to keep in touch with them when the game's over, when the movie's over, what they can just call and, you know, and, and it's easy. Um, they're very, very powerful tools. I've got my, my little iPhone 5 up here charging. You know this, they're very powerful tools. They're so much more than just a phone. The little phone that was up there, when they first came out, that was pretty much it. You can make a phone call at a time. And now you can do so much more. And, and just to activate a smartphone and then hand it off to 12, 13, 16-year-old and say, here's your phone, is crazy. I'm sorry. I, if you've done that, I don't, I don't know most of you, and I'm, I'm not trying to get personal, but if you've just activated a smartphone and handed it to your teenager, and that's that's the end of your involvement in that arena. That's really that's that's like driving them to the seediest part of town at 2 a.m. and dropping them off and saying, "Have a good time." With a hundred dollars in their hand. With a, yeah, exactly. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, thank. You. Ooh, took that to a whole other level there. Um, yeah, it's very dangerous. If 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 the smartphone has a browser, they can pretty much access anything that you can access with a with a computer. Now, of course, like. If it's flash videos and stuff like that, you can't see that on an iPhone. But believe me, if there are if there are ways around it, they will find them out. I'll talk about that a little bit more. It's just very dangerous just to hand off the, the phone like that and 
and not have some kind of filtering or blocking or monitoring or being involved in their lives in that way. I want to show you, I'm going to go through these pretty fast. Um, I'm just going to tell you some of the apps, uh, the most popular apps that are out there. I first did this at our church back in January for our parents. And, uh, and since then, there, have, there are a couple of apps that I've added that I found out about earlier this week that I just had to add to this. And I told them, in six months, some of these apps may be obsolete. It's, some of them blow in and then blow out. Some of them hang around for a couple of years. Uh, the shelf life on these is not that long, but you'll see a lot of them have pretty similar, or a lot of similarities. So when one fades out, another one very similar uh, is going gonna, is gonna to come right back in. Oh, I forgot about this. I have back on the table a little counter. As you go, if you want to pick it up, I have all the slides with the information about the apps. I also have this. This is a graphic, and I didn't put this together. It's based on, on a survey that they did among teenagers, just not church teens, just general teenagers. And they call it the secret life of the online teenager. And I'm not going to try to go through all of it, but they ask kids, uh, you know, what's the most, like, for instance, most popular online activity, social networking, research for school, gaming, viewing downloading, downloaded media, uh, parents in the dark, 56%, and this, I believe, is from 2011. This is pretty old, I think. 56 said their parents know some, but not all of what they do online. 26 admit their parents don't have time to monitor their activities. 91% of kids, surprisingly, say their parents trust them to act appropriately online. In other words, 91% are saying, my parents never check on it, never ask me about it, never look into it. Hey, Charles. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, and, and like I said, this is going to be back there. You can pick that up if you want to. One third of teens say that they often or always hide their online activities. So there's a multitude of ways uh, that they can do that. 21% clear the browser history, 20% hide and delete text messages, 29% minimize the browser when their parents are nearby. There used to be, in, in texting, I think it was PIR, parent in room. So if, if you ever walked up and you're, you're, if they were like in a, in a chat room or something and you saw them type PIR, that means they're letting the people they're chatting with know that the parent is in the room. I don't know if that's, I don't know if anyone even goes to chat rooms anymore like that. Um, 69% said that they openly reveal their physical locations, and many of them do that in their profiles. They'll say, I'm Tecumseh High School. I'm a sophomore at Tecumseh High School. I cheer. I'm a, I play softball at Tecumseh High School. I've told them, look, if you put that you play softball at Tecumseh High School in your profile, someone looking at your profile, if they want to find out how to be physically in the same location, all they do then is they go to the Tecumseh High School webpage and they check the softball schedule. They see where the game is and then they go to the game and boom, they're in the stands watching you. It's scary and a lot of them don't think that, that stuff like that. They don't think through about that. Um, they'll download programs you know, without parents' knowledge. 28% chat with strangers online. What do we tell little kids? What do we used to tell little kids about strangers? Don't talk to strangers. Stranger danger, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, of course, 27% accidentally infect their home computers with viruses or other malware. 14% share passwords with friends. 43% with strangers share their first names. 24% email addresses. 32% uh, of teen girls chat with strangers online. 24% uh, 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 with uh, of teen boys chat, and this is defined as people they don't know in the offline world. This is not people that they go to church with or that they go to school with, they just don't know. These are people that they never have laid eyes on in the real world. Um, so anyway, a lot of scary stuff, uh, and, and on that is back there on the table. You can feel free to, to pick up copies of that if you want it. I want to get into some of the apps. Now this one, Facebook, I'm not even going to say much about that, because I assume most everyone is pretty familiar with Facebook, what you can do, what you can't do. It's been around, it had its 10th birthday uh, back in February. Some people love Facebook, some people hate it. I will tell you, over the last year or two, all the, all the surveys and, and research they've done, teens are, are jumping ship on Facebook left and right. I asked our group a couple of Wednesday nights ago, there's about 40 of them, I said, how many of y'all use Facebook? And maybe five or six raise their hands. And the reason is because now mom and dad and grandma and grandpa are a lot of times on Facebook. So they're, they're going to other things. But Facebook is still out there. 
Snapchat is one that you may have, you may have heard about. Um, Snapchat, it, it's basically, it lets you send photos or videos that are viewable up to 10 seconds. How many of you ever seen or know about Snapchat? You, uh, you, it, it's, it's, it gets a lot of press here lately. Um, after the time is up, the, the pics and the videos disappear. Notice I put that in quotes. Because they don't really go away. If you have enough knowledge about how to get into the inner workings of the phone and the files, you can get the pictures back. Um, you can also create what they call stories of pics or videos that are viewable by, the, by your friends, the people that follow you or that you've given permission to follow you. These are viewable for up to 24 hours. So you can take several different pictures or videos and, and chain them together in a story. And, and people can, can get on there and look at. You don't have to share your phone number or personal information to be a friend or to have someone follow you on Snapchat. You don't, they don't have to tell them their phone number. All they have to do is have the username and then uh, give permission for that person to, to, uh, to be their friend and then, then the, the, the exchanges can start. This is what a, a Snapchat log looks like. It just shows all the people. And I got this off Google Images, by the way. I just went to Google Images and typed Snapchat log and this is probably one of the first ones that came up. I don't know all these people. Um, but this just kind of shows you what, what they've been. This, means there was a video that, that they sent and it was opened. This right here says screenshot. Sarah sent uh, whoever a, a, a screen, a, a picture, and, or that, whoever it is sent Sarah a picture and Sarah screenshot it. That means she took a picture of it with her phone. Now, you get a notification when someone does that. It says like that, so, someone screenshotted that picture that you just sent. But that really doesn't change anything. They still have the picture that you just sent. Uh, the sender is notified, but the photo is still saved on the other device. Um, a line of text can be added. Uh, these are, again, from Google Images. I just typed in Snapchat, and, and they come up. You can add a line of text that will go in the middle. You can move it up and down, and you can even, they recently added, uh, like, big, thick block lettering that you can do, uh, as well as drawing in various colors. You can take a picture and then draw things in. He says, I hope this day gets over in a flash, ha. Huh? Um, but, you know, and, and again, a perfect example of how nothing that you post online or send ever really goes away. I seriously doubt that these two people, when they did this on Snapchat, thought, you know, one day that picture's going to end up in a breakout session at Rewired. I doubt they really thought that, but lo and behold, here it is, and it's on Google Images. Um, so that's pretty much Snapchat. There's no long-term log of, of what they've done on it. it. It saves so many, and then it starts deleting them. There's no easy access to expired snaps, that's those are the pictures and videos, but you can get you can get to them. On New Year's Eve, Snapchat was hacked and usernames and phone numbers for 4.6 million accounts were released online by the hackers. So it's not, none of these are, are safe or secure uh, in that way. Kick is another one uh, that has, has gotten real popular. It's for texting and sending pics. Uh, there are other free apps that you can use to send videos the same way. It's similar to text messaging, but again, you don't have to have uh, you don't have to have the person's phone number. All you have to have is their their name, and you can set up group conversations where several of you are all exchanging messages. Uh, no personal info is required to be friends. Once a chat or a chat log is deleted, it's gone from the phone. And I'm, I imagine you can get in and get it, but again, uh, just like text messaging. The, the, the conversation, whatever was said, whatever was sent, can be very easily, uh, very easily deleted. When you when you go to the app store and, and search it bef as, before it'll download, it says must be over 17 due to mature content. So a lot of these apps do have that kind of as a disclaimer, uh, just to protect them legally. This is a typical uh, kick uh, screen of a of a of a conversation, and you know the examples they give are always something you know, fun. It's like, hey, let's go to the concert, or look, you know, I, think, I think he likes you, or things like that. But you can obviously see how uh, much more, uh, much more uh, wicked things can, can go on. Ask FM is it's a website and, and an app that where people invite questions from, from strangers. Um, it's a question and answer format. It can be anonymous. You can ask somebody a question and then they answer it. It can be whatever. Content is not monitored on this, on, on Ask FM, at least as of, as of recently. 
Uh, there's very limited privacy settings. There are some, but it's very limited as to how much privacy a person can have. It's based in Latvia, which means that when there have been legal issues and bullying and things like that, where they've tried to you know, go through legal channels to get records and things like that, it's very difficult because it's not a US-based uh, company or, or outfit. Uh, it's been increasingly used for bullying over and over again. There have been several cases, uh, several in the UK, where, where teens that had committed suicide, they found that on their Ask FM page had just been undergoing some really horrible uh, attacks, verbal attacks and malicious things like that. This is what an Ask FM page will look like. Up here it says, ask me a question. You have 300, 300 characters. Uh, and this is just basically what it kind of looked like. Someone said, isn't it past your bedtime? Yes. I, I bleeped out or colored over the that one uh, word. You're a little stuck up blank. Would you have sex? LOL, bye. Anyone can ask anything. And then the answers are whatever they whatever they put. That's basically Ask FM. Vine is a six-second videos. Uh, you're probably familiar with this. You post little six-second looping videos. Um, you can like and you can comment on people's videos. You can share videos called revining. If you see something you think is funny or you like it, you can revine it and, and share it. Vines are searchable using tags. If you know what a hashtag is, you can put a hashtag and that will make them show up in searches. Personal info, again, is not required to be a friend. As long as you know someone's username and, and they either give you access or if, if their profile is open, you can, you can follow them. Uh, on Vine. Twitter, probably probably very familiar with Twitter. You get 140 character messages. It's viewable by everybody who follows you. Uh, you can attach videos and pics and web links. You can put that in your message and you click on that. It'll take you to the to the web site. It can be, can be retweeted. Uh, in other words, repeated in your timeline for all your followers uh, to see. Uh, you can notify others if you include their Twitter name in a tweet, then they'll get a notification that someone mentioned you and uh, continue the, the connection that way. Uh, they can be replied to publicly, and you can also send private messages uh, on Twitter. Instagram is, is obviously a very, very popular one. This is picture posting, uh, including comments and likes for each picture. Um, videos are up to 15 seconds long. You can you can do that. They recently added a, an option where you can send private videos and private pictures. So only the person you're sending it to can see it. Uh, similar to Snapchat, except these don't disappear. They stay on, you know, with whoever's whoever you have sent them to. Uh, you can see what pics your friends have recently liked. Like if you're friends with somebody, you can go and you can, it'll tell you so and so liked five pics. It'll show you the pictures they liked. Um, I, I will say this about Instagram. A lot of people are not aware. There, there's hardcore porn on Instagram. Uh, uh, you, it, it's, it's not hard to find. And, and if you go to, to some of the other breakouts, uh, Jerry and, and Brett and, uh, and John especially, about dealing with pornography, they'll tell you uh, that the age now of first exposure to, to pornography is, is under 10 years old. I can't remember exactly what it is, but it's very, very young. And, and about two-thirds of those are accidental. It's people who are not looking for stuff. They're just on Instagram or, or wherever, just scrolling through, and then boom, all of a sudden there it is. I was telling telling somebody, I, looked, I was looking up a, a friend of mine on Twitter, and I just typed in his name as it is. And and there are a lot of people with, with that name, so a lot of things came up. And the very first one that came up was not my friend, it was somebody else. And the profile picture, I want to make sure I don't embarrass myself too bit. The profile picture on Twitter that they had was a penis. And that was their profile picture on Twitter. So don't think that it's just Snapchat and all these other evil ones that you always hear about. Things. Things are available on Instagram and Twitter. It's available everywhere. Right now, it's not a question of will they be exposed. It's a matter of when and how and where. And what are you going to do about it when it does happen? Because if it hasn't already, I promise you it will. It's just the world we live in. Whisper is another relatively new one. This one, this is their tagline. Express yourself, share secrets, meet new people. And the idea is 
that you share secrets, you, you, it's things that you would whisper. Uh, and what it is, is it, it, uh, when, you, when you're downloading it, this one says rated 17 plus due to frequent, intense, mature, and suggestive themes. Um, and what it is, it's, it's very simply text messages placed over pictures. You type in your little text message, and then it will, it will randomly pick a picture, maybe based loosely on something you typed. If you said, I love Mexican food, it may pull up a, a picture. I'm sorry to do food. There's getting ready to go to supper. <laughs> they may pull up a picture of a burrito, and then it puts your picture over that. You can also put your own pictures in there with your text if you want to. This is a typical uh, whisper. This is this is Bruce, the three-week-old squirrel whose life I saved. And everybody goes, oh, isn't that cool? Isn't that cute little Bruce? And and again, you can see how with this kind of opportunity, most of the pictures are not pictures of fuzzy little squirrels. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it, it, can be, it can be really scary. And, and one thing that's really scary about Whisper is it may reveal a user's approximate location. When you go into Whisper, if you give it, if you say yes, you know, Whisper would like to, I can't remember the message, basically Whisper wants to use the GPS on your phone to know where you are. When you do that, and then you, you, give a, you post a whisper, uh, it, will, it will log where you are physically. And then other people, as they search, there's a, there's a selection across the top. It'll say nearby. And they click nearby. And then the whispers will come up. And it literally tells. It doesn't give an address, but it tells about how far away that person is. It'll say, like if I did in, in Shawnee where I live, it might say Shawnee one mile. That lets me know that whoever posted whatever picture I'm looking at is about a mile away from me. And then it does have the option for direct messaging, so you can make contact. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a scary one. Um, oh, the, there is a pin required to look through the history as well. So in order to see the history of, of any of these direct messages, you have to know the, the, the pin in order to, to get into that. Omegle, is, it's a website, and it's also an app. Um, this is based oh, there it is right there, both the website and app. It allows anonymous one-on-one -on -one chatting. When you open up the screen, it's like a big chat room, but it's going to it's going to team you up with with one person, and and their I think their tagline is talk to strangers. That's that's the that's their their motto, talk to strangers. And you click the little button, and it'll say searching for a stranger. Uh, you can't send pics. You can send links. So you can send links to internet sites. Uh, and you can receive links to internet sites, which you can then copy and paste, and you're at that site. Uh, there is also a video section. So if you have a, a laptop or a webcam, you can click to the video section, and you're going to be video chatting with whoever's picked randomly by their, by their system. Uh, so uh, you can probably see it, it's supposedly monitored. I mean, it, when you go on there at the beginning, it'll say, you know, Keep it clean, blah, 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 you know. Uh, but most of these, the monitor monitoring depends on the people using them, and it depends on them reporting uh, what, what is going on on the app. This is what Omegle looks like when you, when you go to it. It'll say, start a chat. This spy question mode, you can, if you want to, you can type a question, and then it throws it out there for two other people to answer. And you don't have any input in the conversation. You just sit there and watch them answer it and talk about it. Um, and meet strangers with common interests. This is sort of a, a hashtagging. You can type, you can type in football, and then it'll look for someone else who has typed in football, and then it'll pair you up, and you can chat about football or whatever topic. But again, you can see how uh, how much opportunity this offers uh, to to people. So yeah, chatting with complete <coughs> complete strangers or video chatting <coughs> is what what Omegle is about. This is an, an app called Down, and it's it's relatively new, except it used to be called Bang with Friends. Anybody ever remember hearing about Bang with Friends a few years ago? It was called Bang with Friends, and it got banned from the Apple App Store. So I don't know how they did this. They brought it back, and it's called Down. And basically, it links to your Facebook. You have to link it to your Facebook account. Users anonymously tag those friends, people you're already friends with on Facebook, you tag them in Down if you would be interested in having a sexual encounter with them. Now, they don't know you have done this unless they have the app and they tag you. 
when that happens, you both get a notification that the other one is down. <laughs> and, and that's what, and it's totally free. It's, uh, it's in the app store. It was on the app store yesterday. I went back to make sure and, and see that it was still there. So that's, if you, if you see a, a little red icon with the little thin D, um, know what that, that's what that is. This is one I just found out about. I couldn't really find a, a, a really sharp, good graphic for the icon. This is called Poof. And basically, it's an app that allows you to hide app icons. So in other words, you download Poof, and then, and I don't, I don't even know how it works. I haven't even had time to, to get into it and, and check it out. But this will allow people to hide icons for these other things. So if you think, well, I'll just scroll through, and I'll just scroll through and see what apps are on there. Well, if they have Poof, you're not going to see them unless you know they have that, and you know how to find it and, and get in there. You're not going to be able to see it because they're going to be hidden. This is another one. This is called Yik Yak. This is pretty new. This was developed by, by two students at Furman University just kind of as a bulletin board, especially for college campuses, uh, similar to Facebook. And as happened with Facebook when, when it opened it up to everybody, uh, high school and mid-high students have, have been drawn to, to Yik Yak. It's just short, simple messages similar to Twitter, um, very similar. You can vote up or down, and you can respond to people's messages. This is, this is what a typical Yik Yak screen looked like yesterday. I pulled this up at, I think, about 10 o'clock in the morning. And it's just people, it's sort of like Twitter. It's just random things. Uh, they're just kind of thrown out there. Now, one thing about Yik Yak, this also has a, a, an opportunity this says top yaks in my area. You can you can make a selection. It'll show you, I guess they call them yaks, top yaks in, in my area. These are yaks that were going on yesterday. Uh, well, and, and up to, it's not that popular yet. This, this was the most recent one for Shawnee, and it's four weeks ago. Uh, five days ago, five days ago. Um, it says respond and, and like this when you see it. Let's get people using this. The thing about it is, again, if, if when you're posting something to Yik Yak, if your location services are turned on for the app, what, when, you, when you click that, this is what I saw. And my house, I live very close to OBU, my house is right about there on the corner right there. So that lets me know that, that whoever posted that message right there, when they posted it, was basically just around the corner from me. And again, it was a very, very non-threatening, non—you uh, know, wasn't an evil message at all. But you can see again the opportunity that, that it affords. It, I mean, it pinpoints you know the location of where they were uh, when they did that. Why is social media so popular? These are just, like I said, these are just some of the apps that are out there. A few months, you may not be able to see, find any of them. A few months, there will probably be others that do something similar or worse. Um, it gives a feeling of being known. We all want to be known. We all want to have a connection. Uh, we all want to be known either for who we really are or who we want to be. You know, you can make yourself anybody uh, in your profile if you want to. Uh, for a lot of them, the, the number of followers or friends is very important. I have, I'm, I want to get to 1,000 followers. My goal, 2,000. Give me to 2K. You know, and they'll, they'll post and they'll look for shout outs and they'll, they'll do everything they can to get all these followers. Or how many likes, or how many how many you know re retweets you get, or how many likes a picture you get. That's very important. Um, a recent study at Harvard uh, showed that the act. This was in part of the conclusion where they were they were asking why do people do this? Why do people post things about their personal life online? The act of disclosing information about oneself activates the same part of the brain that is associated with the sensation of pleasure. The same pleasure that we get from eating food, getting money, or even having sex. And I don't, I, I'll be honest, I don't get that. I'm 48, I guess I'm too old. I remember when, when you know, Facebook was getting popular and all these other apps, I'm thinking, why do I want to tell people what I'm having for lunch? And yet I found myself doing it sometimes when it's really good. But, um, you know, I see people just putting all this stuff out there on Facebook and just, just you know, going off, and I just don't get it. But this is what this is what this study at, at Harvard determined that there's a sense of, of pleasure in in revealing and in being known uh, things to be aware of. I'm going to wrap this up. Things to be aware of just about these about all these apps. 
Um, all of these apps that I mentioned are free. They don't cost anything. They can be downloaded completely for free. Most of them do have some kind of agreement to sign up. Uh, you know, there's always a legal department somewhere. They don't want any liability coming back. Um, they may have age restrictions, which and I know, you know when your 14-year-old daughter is going to download an app and it says you have to be 18 or over and she sees that, I know that pretty much ends it, right? She's going, oh, I'm not going to do that. Yeah, yeah right. Uh, they, but they do. They say you, you have to be this old or you know recommended for this age. Well, we all know. Nobody, nobody cares about that. You have a lot of them. You have to agree to the terms, and you know you scroll through all the fine print. Everybody scrolls through the fine print and reads it all before you click agree, right? Right. Very, very uh, tongue in cheek. And they always include a release of liability. Basically, if you use this app, uh, we're not responsible for for what happens. Um, all of them are vulnerable to hackers. Like I said, Snapchat. Uh, Four point six million people had their their. Uh, their user information revealed online. All of them do have some level of privacy settings. That does not make them safe. For one thing, the privacy settings have to be used, uh, at which they're not always. And you know, you can set them up. You know, maybe you maybe you're you're in there and you set them up with privacy settings. Well, go back and and check every now and then. Make sure those haven't been turned off. Uh, I'm just saying that's we all know how how that works. Um, they all have some kind of privacy, but, but that doesn't necessarily mean anything. Tags and hashtags may post searchable. You can search for specific topics. You can tag your posts in order to be found. I've put some stuff on Instagram since I've been here today, and I've tagged it Men Rewired. And you can go and, and look for the hashtag Men Rewired, and my pictures will come up if you scroll through and look for them. You can hashtag anything. And even on Instagram, uh, you can hashtag things and, and uh, people have found ways around alternate spellings for words uh, if you want to search if you want to search for things you can find it and you can do that using hashtags uh, most of them are monitored only by the users appropriate inappropriate content is going to stay on there until it's reported so you know if someone reports something quick you know that they're usually pretty good to, to, to get it off there quick but again it just depends on someone blowing the whistle on them all of them can put your child in contact with total strangers. They can put your, con your child in contact with someone who says they live somewhere, says they're a certain age, says they're a certain gender, and who knows who they really are. Um, tips for monitoring. Know what sites and apps they're using. And I know this is very difficult to do, uh, but, but, but making the effort to, to be involved in knowing what apps they're using is critical. Check the privacy settings periodically. Go back and see uh, if, if they're all still like you set them up to be. Monitor their posts. I, I always, I would say, this is just my personal advice or opinion for what it's worth. If, if I had a, I have, I have two stepdaughters, they're in their 30s now. And of course, when they were teenagers, none of this was around. If they were teenagers now, this would be the rule. Okay, you're on Instagram, you're on Twitter. I'm going to follow you. I'm, I'm going I'm to follow you, uh, and, and, and I want you to make it private, but I'm going to follow you. And if you're not going to do that, then, then we're not going to have it. Um, monitor their posts, but allow them some space. I asked our youth for the last couple of Wednesday nights. I told them I was going to be doing this, and I told them I was going to get to this part. And I said, what... What advice do you want to give to those mostly dads about monitoring your social media life? And, and most of them, nobody said, you know, don't do it, it's, it's, you're invading my privacy. Most of them said, you know, for one, don't blow up my, my timeline with comments, <laughs> you know, don't, don't be responding, don't be posting things on there. You know, give them a little bit of space. Um, it's good for them to know that you're seeing what they do, but... But uh, they just say, you know, give us, give us a little bit of space. Um, teach them about their digital reputation. That if they share something or send something or if they post something, it never really goes away. That's so important. Again, those pictures, you know, of the Snapchat. I, I doubt that girl when she was in class, you know, ever had, it, had any idea that it would be up on the wall here today. But it sure was. And be honest with them about the dangers. You know, just like I said, you know, if, if in their profile they say, you know, I, 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 uh, I'm in the band at, at Shawnee High School. You know, 
show them how, how that makes it so easy for someone, should they want to, to, to end up in the same room with them. Now, and, and, and I know that they're like, well, I want, I want to represent. I want, to, I want them to know I go to Shawnee. And, you know, they'll have pictures in their, in their cheer uniform. It'll say Shawnee. And it, it's just too dangerous. It's just too dangerous to, to be that open about it. Be honest with them about the dangers. I think, I think maybe scaring them a little bit is good. If, if you can. And know the technology. Um, you don't have to be a, I, I am not a technological guru. I think when they first put out that I was going to be here on the little thing, it said, it said technological guru. I, I emailed Jeremy, Keith's assistant, and I said, seriously? I'm, I am not a technological guru. But know the technology. Know how things work. Know what's out there. Um, and, and just in closing, I'll say this. This is the, that was kind of the, I hope that kind of shocked you. I hope it kind of scared you. I hope you're going to go home and say, let me see your phone. <laughs> but here's the thing. Involvement and communication in their lives are key. I've been, I've been in student ministry for 30 years next month. I'm a youth minister now. And this is how I approach this from. Like I said, the question is not, are they going to see stuff? The question is not, will it happen? The question is, has it already happened? And if it hasn't, when will it? Because it will. So what you have to do is you have to be preemptive. You have to be, as dads and, and, and maybe grandfathers and uncles, you have to now work with them to diffuse that, that leaning, that, 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 that appetite for that. And the only, way, the only thing that's going to do that is the Spirit of God inside them. That is the only the only thing. We can't shield them from evil, but we have to teach them how to fight it. Because let's let's face it, men, we fight it on a daily basis. You see stuff on TV. We see stuff on TV and magazines. Sometimes we I see stuff I just have to look away. And and and, and so it's a fight to keep our minds pure. It's a fight to keep our hearts uh, hungry for the things of God and not, not hungry for the things that this world offers. And this world offers some really good things. This world offers some really, really wicked things. The most effective approach is not to monitor, to lock them out, to take away their smartphone. Uh, that's not the most effective. And, and I've got some stuff back there about covenant eyes, if, if you're familiar with that. And if you go to, to uh, John Wolf and Jerry and, and Brett's breakout, they'll be talking about covenant eyes. There's all kinds of filtering uh, programs. There, there are ways to do that. And, and really the best way to view those, I think, is, is not so much as protection from them going to look for it, but protection from it coming into them. Because like I said, two-thirds of the first exposures are accidental. They're not looking for it. They're just online. I, I think it's, um, I can't remember if it's, I think it's Jerry or John talks about his I think it's, no, it's Jerry, his six or seven or eight year old grandson, online, clicked about two things and, and went to and pulled up like forty two hardcore porn sites. Um, it's not hard to find. You don't have to pay for it. You don't have to have a credit card. They can find it very easily. The most effective approach is not to warn them, and to monitor, but lead them to have a heart and a desire for the things of God. Disciple them in the home. Be, I always say, I'm the youth minister, but the primary youth minister in a teen's life ought to be their dad, Amen. ought to be their parents in the home. I, I look at my job as supporting the parents and, 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 and giving them resources and, and encouraging them and helping them. Uh, and biblically, it's not my job. If you look at Deuteronomy 6, Actively disciple and trust in God to, to work in their hearts and to draw himself, draw them to himself. I heard a, a, a preacher give a great, a great uh, illustration of this one time. He said, it's, it's like when you have a little, a little toddler and they're learning how to walk. You know, we want people to, to, to follow after God. We want, we want our teens, we want our, our sons and daughters to desire Christ and to have a heart that's hungry for him. Well, when a little, a little baby is, they're starting to pull up, you know, and they're rocking and they're pulling up and they're taking that first step. And they, they pull up there on the coffee table. And so you, you back away and you come here. What do you tell them to do? Now, this is, this is risky because you may give me the, the answer I'm not looking for. But what do you normally tell them to do when they turn around and they're looking at you and they're all wobbling? What do you say? Come here. Come here. You say, come here. Rarely do you ever say, let go. Let go of the table. 
It's not about them letting go of the table. It's about them coming to you. It's not so much about, about you know, monitoring and warning and checking their phone every day. Do that. That's important. But more importantly is what can you do to, to help nurture in them a desire for the things of God? <coughs> Read scripture with them. Pray with them. Be open with them. Be, be honest with them about your struggles. Have conversations with them. If you have a son who's older than me, well, it, 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 it would differ. But at some point, you need to say, you know what, son, have you ever seen, you know, on the computer or maybe over to a friend's house, have you ever seen, you know, things? Open those doors of conversation. I know it's weird. I know we don't, we're scared of the answer. We're scared of when they go, well, yeah. And then, like, oh, what do I do? But open those doors. Be real with them. Uh, let them know that they can talk to you uh, about that. It's so important. The Holy Spirit within them is going to be the best force at keeping them in line when it comes to all this kind of stuff. The Holy Spirit within us is the only thing, is the best thing that's going to keep us from, from, from going down the wrong path. And it's the same way with your sons and your daughters. Do what you can to, to, to disciple them. And, and again, I think if, if they know you're involved, and if you tell them, well, this is why I'm, this is why I'm checking. Uh, Jerry and John and uh, Brett and I did a, did a panel a few weeks ago at CHA one night. It was for the parents, and it was about pornography and about you know, overcoming that and preventing that or, or, or guarding against that. And one of the parents gave a question to me. They, they said, you know, well, when my teen says, well, well you don't trust me, what do you say? And I said, I would say, you're right. I, I don't. But it's not because I don't trust you. I'm trying to protect you. I told the, the men in the speaker's deal this morning when I was telling them who I was and what I do, my goal is that your sons and daughters, uh, and maybe you, never have to go to Jerry. You know what I'm talking about, Jerry and, and Jerry Wright? And that, that you never have to send them to those guys to help them overcome a sexual addiction or, or a addiction to something like this or that you never have to to seek help to, to, to heal the wounds that have been caused by things I don't think these apps are the devil I use Instagram, I use Twitter I use Facebook in our student ministry I put, put pictures and I do things like that I don't think these apps are the devil but he can sure use them but so can God it's not about the apps are evil. It's not about technology is evil. It's just about what we do with it. And I just want to encourage you men to, to be the chief youth minister in your kids' lives. Um, be involved. Know what they're doing. But, but be open to them. And, uh, and, and you know, as you chase hard after God, bring them along with you. Let them see your struggles. Let them, let them know that you're not perfect. You don't have all the answers. They know it anyway. <laughs> they know it anyway, I promise you.